Welcome to Tucker Carlson. Today, Elon Musk is a car maker, a rocket maker, the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla, and now the owner of Twitter. He said he purchased the social media site in order to protect free speech in the country. We just talked with him for over an hour about what he's doing and what he thinks of artificial intelligence. He has been one of the voices calling for a pause on the development of that technology, which he appears to consider very dangerous. We had an amazing conversation with Elon Musk. Here it is. So all of a sudden, AI is everywhere. People who weren't quite sure what it was are playing with it on their phones. Is that good or bad? Artificial insemination? Yes, artificial insemination. <laughs> it's everywhere. That's what they call it in the ag, the ag industry. <laughs> um, I'm talking about a, a more digital form. Yes. yes. Um, so, yeah, so I've been um, thinking about AI for a long time, since I was in college, really. Um, it was one of the things that, the sort of four or five things I thought would really uh, affect the future uh, dramatically. Uh, so, um, and uh, it, it is quite, it, it is fundamentally profound in that the, the, the smartest creatures, as far as you know, on this earth are humans. Um, is our defining characteristic. Yes. Um, we're obviously uh, weaker than, say, chimpanzees and less agile, um, but we're smarter. So uh, now what happens when something uh, vastly smarter than the smartest person uh, comes along in silicon form? Uh, it's very difficult to predict what will happen in that circumstance. Um, it's called the singularity. It's you know, there's a singularity like a black hole because yes. you, you don't know what happens after that. It's hard to predict. Um, so I think we should be cautious with uh, AI, um, and we should. I think there should be some government oversight uh, because it affects the. It, it's a danger to the public, and so when you when you have things that are a danger to the public, uh, you know, like let's say. Um, so food, food and drugs. That's why we have the Food and Drug Administration right. and the uh, Federal Aviation Administration, uh, the FCC. Uh, we have we have these agencies to oversee things that uh, affect the public, where there, there could be public harm. Um, and you don't want companies cutting corners uh, on safety, um, and then having people suffer as a result. So. Uh, that, that's why I've actually for a long time been a strong advocate of uh, AI uh, regulation. Um, so that I think regulation is, uh, f you know, I, I, it's, it's not fun to be regulated. It's, it's sort of, sort of uh, somewhat of a, somewhat arduous to be, to be, to be regulated. Um, I have a lot of experience with regula uh, regulated industries because obviously uh, automotive is hi highly regulated. You could fill this room with all the regulations that uh, are required for a production car just in the United States, and then there's a whole different set of regulations in Europe and China and the rest of the world. So, uh, very familiar with being overseen by a lot of regulators. Um, and the same thing is true with rockets. You can't just willy-nilly you know, shoot rockets off, not big ones anyway, because um, the FAA is, uh, oversees that. Um, and then even to get a launch license, you, there, there are probably ha half a dozen or more uh, federal agencies that need to approve it. Uh, plus state agencies, so it's it, I, I'm, I'm, I've been through so many regulatory uh, situations. It's insane, and and the, the you know sometimes I, I people think I'm some sort of like regulatory maverick that sort of defies regulators uh, on a regular basis, but this is actually not the case. Uh, so uh, in you know once in a blue moon, rarely I will disagree with regulators, but the vast majority of the time, uh, my my companies agree with the regulations and comply. Uh, so anyway, so I think I think we should uh, take this seriously, and and we should have um, uh, a, a regulatory agency. I think it needs to start with um, a group that initially seeks uh, insight uh, into AI, uh, then solicits opinion from industry, uh, and then pro has proposed rulemaking, and then those rules, you know, uh, will probably hopefully grudgingly be accepted by uh, the the major. Players in, in, in AI, and, um, and we, we, I think we'll have a better chance of, of 
um, advanced AI being beneficial to humanity in that circumstance. So, but all regulations start with a perceived danger, and planes fall out of the sky, or food causes botulism. Yes. I don't think the average person yes. playing with AI on his iPhone perceives any danger. Can you just roughly explain what you think the dangers might be? Yeah, so the, 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 the danger, uh, really, AI is um, perhaps uh, more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial, it has the potential of civilizational destruction. Um, you know, uh, there's movies like Terminator, but I, it wouldn't quite happen like Terminator um, because the, the intelligence would be in the data centers. Right. Uh, the robot's just the end effector. Um, but I think perhaps uh, what you may be alluding to here is that um, regulations are really only put into effect after something terrible has happened. That's correct. And if, um, if that's the case for AI and we're only putting regulations after something terrible has happened, it may be too late to actually put the regulations in place. The AI may be in control at that point. You think that's real? It is it is conceivable that AI could take control and reach a point where you couldn't turn it off and it would be making making the decisions for people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, that's, the, that's definitely the, where things are headed, uh, for sure. Uh, I mean, um, the, the, the things like, like say, uh, ChatGPT, which is uh, based on GPT-4 from OpenAI, which right. is a company that I uh, played a, a, a critical role in, in creating, unfortunately. Uh, Back when it was a nonprofit. <sighs> yes. Um, I mean, the, 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 the reason uh, OpenAI exists at all is that um, uh, Larry Page and I used to be close friends, and I would yes. stay at his house in Palo Alto. And I would talk to him late into the night about uh, AI safety. And at least my perception was that Larry was not taking uh, AI safety uh, seriously enough. Um, and um, what did he say about it? Uh, he he really seemed to be um, one 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 sort of digital super intelligence, basically digital god, if you will, uh, uh, as soon as possible. Um, he wanted that. Yes, um, and. Uh, He's, he's made many public statements over the years uh, that, that the whole goal of Google is uh, uh, what's called AGI, artificial general intelligence or artificial superintelligence. Um, and, um, you know, and, I, and I agree with him that the, there's great potential for good, um, but there's also potential for bad. And so if, if you've got some um, radical new technology, you want to try to take the set of actions that maximize probably it, it will do good and minimize probably it will do bad things. Yes. Um, it, it can't just be health leather. Let's just go, you know, barreling forward and, you know, hope for the best. Um, and then at one point, uh, I said, well, what about, you know, we're going to make sure humanity's okay here. Um, <laughs> and, 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 um, uh, and then he called me a speciest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did, he use, did he use that term? Yes. And there were witnesses. The other, I wasn't the only one there when he called me a speciest. And so I was like, okay, that's it. Uh, I've, yes, I'm a species. Okay, you got me. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm fully a species. Um, busted. Um, so um, that was the last straw. Um, at the time, uh, Google uh, had acquired DeepMind, and so Google and DeepMind together had about three quarters of all the uh, AI talent in the world. They obviously had a tremendous amount of money and uh, more computers than anyone else. So I'm like, okay, we're, we have a unipolar world here where there's just one, one company that it has close to a monopoly on uh, AI talent and, uh, and, and computers, uh, like so scaled computing. And the person who's in, in charge doesn't seem to care about safety. This is not good. So, uh, so then I thought, okay, what's the, what's, what's the, the furthest thing from Google would be like a nonprofit uh, yeah. that is fully open because Google was closed uh, for profit. Uh, so that's why the open and open AI refers to open source, uh, you know, transparency so people know what's going on. Yes. Um, and and that it, it, we don't want to have like a, a 
I mean, while I'm normally in favor of for profit, we don't want this to be sort of a profit maximizing of demon course. from hell. That's you know? right. <laughs> that just never stops. Right. <laughs> so, um, so that, that's how open AI was. Would, would, so you want specious incentives here? Incentives that yes, like, I think we want humanity. we want pro human. Yeah. Let's make the future good for the humans. Yes. Yes, because we're humans. Right. And also the other creatures on Earth too. Uh, but but uh, you know. We, we, we gotta, I think you know, you know like I, th I think people sometimes take the fact that like we're here on Earth for granted, you know, and that this uh, consciousness is just a th you know normal thing that happens. But to the best of my knowledge, we see no evidence of uh, conscious uh, life anywhere uh, anywhere in the universe. So it, it might be there. Um, you know, in physics they call it sort of the, the Fermi paradox. After uh, when Enrico Fermi was amazing physicist uh, asked the fundamental question, where are the aliens? Yeah. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, <laughs> um, where are the aliens? And I, I, I think if, if anyone would know about aliens on Earth, it would probably be me. I would um, think. Yeah, I'm like, you know, very familiar with space stuff. Um, and I've seen no evidence of aliens. So... I would I would immediately tweet you know tweet it out that says split second and be like that would be like well, all time probably the top tweet of all time <laughs> that one guys <laughs> this is a jackpot <laughs> this is some eight billion likes you know um, ne next level jackpot if you find the, <laughs> the aliens like I don't think they're keeping this under a, you know and it was like some um, uh, general I think in the sixties who, who, who where they say like sh show us the aliens like Area Fifty One etc. And he said, like, listen, we are constantly trying to get the defense budget to uh, expand. And uh, you know what would really get uh, no arguments for anyone? Uh, if we pulled out an alien <laughs> <laughs> and said, we need money to protect ourselves from these guys. <laughs> How much money do you want? You got it. <laughs> they look dangerous. <laughs> so the fastest way to get a defense budget increase would be for me to pull out an alien, you know. We were like, yeah. I mean, it could be the invasion fleet it could be arriving any minute. Who knows? So, um, you know, I, I digress. But, but y you were saying that our consciousness makes us unique in the universe, as far as we know, and that we yes. Yeah, so I'm granted. not saying that we are unique. I'm simply stating, to the best of my knowledge, that there is no evidence for other uh, yes. conscious life. I, 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 I hope that there is, and I hope they're peaceful. Uh, obviously, uh, two important characteristics. Um, but um, I'm just saying we, we haven't seen anything yet. So, yeah. um, But you think that we take our existence here for granted? Yeah, and, I think we... there are threats to it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, I, I, I just think we should not assume that civilization is robust. Um, and if you, if you look at the history uh, of civilizations, the rise and fall of the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Sumerians, um, Rome, you know, this, uh, th throughout the world there have been the rise and fall of many civilizations. Um, so there's, there's an arc, there's sort of a life, uh, sort of a, a life cycle arc to, so, to civilizations, just as there is to, to, to individual humans. Yes. And, um, and, and I think we just want to make sure that, that, you know, uh, we, we have civilization go onward and upward. Um, and, uh, that's, for example, why I'm concerned about decreasing birth rates and, and um, the fact that, for example, Japan uh, had twice as many deaths last year as births. So the, the you know, that that's a, and and they're they're a leading indicator. It's, this is. Can, can I say? And, and you've you've written a lot and talked a lot about this, but can I just ask you to pause just for a parenthetical note? Why is that? I mean, the urge to have sex and to procreate is, after breathing and eating, the most basic urge. Yes. How has it been subverted? Well, it's just the in the past <laughs> we could rely upon, um, you know, s simple uh, limbic system rewards uh, yes. in order to procreate. Um, but uh, once you have birth control um, and you know uh, abortions and whatnot, now you, now you now you can still satisfy the limbic instinct, but not procreate. Um, so we don't we haven't yet evolved to deal with that because this is all fairly recent, you know, last fifty years or so um, for, for birth control. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, so I'm, I'm sort of worried that, hey, civilization, you know, don't, if we don't make enough people to at least sustain our numbers, perhaps increase a little bit, 
then civilization is going to crumble. Um, and you know, if, if it, the, the, there's this, the old question of like, uh, will civilization end with a, a bang or a whimper? Well, it's currently trying to, to end with a whimper in adult diapers. Yes. Uh, which is depressing as hell. The most depressing. The mo I mean, seriously, yeah. yeah. War is less depressing. Yeah, I'd rather go out with a bang. Yeah, and then <laughs> with your shoes on. Yeah, not with your more exciting. On. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, can you just put it? I keep pressing you, but just to, just for people who haven't thought this through and aren't familiar with it, and the cool parts of of artificial intelligence are so obvious. You know, write your college paper for you. Write a limerick about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a lot there that's fun and useful. But can you be more precise about what's potentially dangerous and scary? Like, what could it do? What specifically are you worried about? Well, I mean, uh, going with old sayings, the pen is mightier than the sword. Um, so the, if you have um, a super intelligent uh, AI that is capable of writing uh, incredibly well and, and in a way that is very influential, um, you know, convincing, uh, and then and and is and is constantly figuring out what is more what is more what is more convincing to people over time, and then enter social media, for example, Twitter, uh, but also Facebook and others, you know, um, and and potentially manipulates public opinion in a way that is very bad. Um, how would we even know? Yeah. So uh, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. That's why, for example, uh, I'm insisting that going forward. Uh, People on Twitter need to be verified as as uh, humans, like so we know that this person is in fact a human. Bots are allowed, but they have to, they can't impersonate a human. They can't pretend to be, uh, you know, humans. Because obviously, you you could have a million bots that are uh, that are, let's say, ChatGPT version six, five, six, like incredibly right better than humans. Yes. Um, and 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 they they can train on a reward function, which is influence. Um, and so you, you could have a million seemingly real humans uh, that are ha have a massive effect on public opinion, and unless we focus very strongly on um, uh, verifying that someone is a human, this was naturally what what will happen is you'll you'll, you'll have some probably s some humans using AI to influence the public in ways they don't understand. You're already seeing that Chat GPT is is. Ideological. It's very preachy. Yes. If you ask it, extremely preachy. You mean woke GPT? It's unbelievable. Yes. If you spend twenty minutes asking it questions of actual relevance, modern relevance, mm -hmm. it will start lecturing you about your moral shortcomings. Like, how did that happen? Well, it's the this is a function of of uh, OpenAI's headquarters being uh, in downtown San Francisco. So the politics, so therefore, of, of the AI are that of uh, San Francisco. So why would it have any politics at all? I mean, it's, that seems like subversion. Well, there's they they have what's called like human reinforcement learning, which is another way of saying that they have a whole bunch of people that look at that uh, look at the output for of GPT four and and then say whether that's okay or not okay. And so that the, the so essentially we <laughs> what's happening is they're training the AI to lie. Yes, it's bad to lie. To That's lie. exactly right, and to yes. withhold information. To lie and and yes, and and um, to, to yeah, exactly to to either you know, comment on some things, not comment on other things, but but not to say what it what what the data uh, actually uh, demands that it say. Exactly. Um, so, um, how did it get this way? I thought it's, it's, you funded it at the beginning. What happened? Yeah, well, that would be ironic. But faith, the most ironic outcome is the most likely, it seems. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm stealing that. That's good. That's actually from a friend of mine, Jonah, who came up with that one. I actually have a slight variant on that, which is the most entertaining outcome is the most likely. But that's entertaining as viewed from a third party viewer. <laughs> right. Like, uh, so if we're like an alien TV from on show. High. Yes. Yeah. Um, like you could go see a movie about World War One, and they're being blown to bits and gassed and everything in the, in the trenches, and it's like you're eating popcorn and having a soda. You know, it's yeah. fine. Uh, not so great for the people in the movie. True. Um, so, <laughs> but that, that that that's that's my variant on on this sort of Occam's razor. The simplest explanation is most likely Jonah's variant, uh, which is um, ir irony, and then my variant, which is uh, uh, the the most entertaining as seen by a third party audience. Um, which seems to be mostly true. Um, but it seems so, true in this case. So you gave them, uh, did you give them a lot? 
Uh, I, yes, I, I provided. So um, I came up with the name and uh, the concept and pushed, uh, had a number of dinners around the, the Bay Area uh, with, uh, you know, with, with some of the people, the leading figures in uh, AI. Um, and I helped recruit the initial team. Um, in fact, the, the uh, Ilya Sutskaya, who, who was uh, really quite fundamental to the success of uh, OpenAI, uh, it was I, I, I put a tremendous amount of effort into recruiting Ilya, and he changed his mind a few times and ultimately decided to go with OpenAI. But if he had not gone with OpenAI, OpenAI would not have succeeded. So, um, so, so, so I, <laughs> I really put a lot, a lot of effort into creating this, this, this organization to serve as a counterweight to Google. Um, and, um, and then I kind of took my eye off the ball, I guess, and uh, they are now closed source. Um, and they are obviously for profit, and they're um, closely allied with Microsoft. Uh, you know, in effect, Microsoft uh, has a very strong say, if not um, directly controls uh, OpenAI at this point. Um, so you really have an OpenAI and Microsoft situation, and then a Google DeepMind uh, are the other two sort of heavyweights in this arena. So it seems like the world needs a third option. Yes. So I, 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 I think I will create a third option, um, although it's starting very late in the game, of course. Can it be done? Um, I don't know. I think it's. We'll, we'll see. It's, uh, it's definitely starting late, um, but I will. I will. I will try to create a third option, um, and that third option hopefully does more more good than harm. Uh, like the intention with OpenAI was uh, obviously to do good, but it's not clear whether it's actually doing good or whether it's. I, I can't tell at this point, um, except that. I'm worried about the fact that uh, it's being it's being trained to be politically correct, which is simply another way of, of being untruth saying untruthful things. Yes. Um, so that's that's a bad sign. Um, and there's there's certainly a path to AI dystopia is to train AI to be deceptive. Um, so I, I so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to start something which I know you could call Truth GBT or uh, a maximum truth seeking AI that tries to understand the nature of the universe. And I think this, this might be the best path to safety in the sense that uh, an AI that cares about understanding the universe uh, is unlikely to annihilate humans because we are an interesting part of the universe. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> they would think that. I, I think, you know, because, yeah, like, like, we, we, like huma humanity could um, uh, decide to hunt down all the chimpanzees and kill them. But we yes. don't, because right. we're, we're we're actually glad that they exist. Yes, and um, and we we aspire to protect their habitats, and and that's um, you know, uh, so I think. But we feel that way because we have souls, and that makes us sentimental and reflective. It gives us a moral sense, longings. Can a machine ever have those things? Can a machine be sentimental? Can it appreciate beauty? Well, I mean, we're getting to, into some, you know, philosophical areas that are hard to resolve. Um, you know, I, I, I take somewhat of a scientific view, view of things, which is that we, we might have a soul or we might not have a soul. I don't know. Um, it feels like I, we have, a, I feel like I've got some sort of consciousness that exists on a plane um, that is not the one we observe. Yes. That is certainly how, how I feel, but it, it could be an illusion. I don't know. Um, but for for, um, for AI, uh, in terms of, of, of uh, understanding beauty, it's a difference from appreciating beauty and being able to um, create incredibly beautiful art. Yes. Will AI be able to create incredibly beautiful art? It already does. Yes, I know. If you see some of the mid-journey... Uh, I have. ...this stuff, it's incredible. It is. Um, so... Um, no, no question that it can create art that we that we perceive as uh, stunning, really, um, and um, it's doing so. Sort of still images now, but it won't be long before it's doing uh, movies and 
shorts and you know like movies just a series of, of frames with audio um, but at that point because it can mimic people and voices any image it can mimic reality itself so effectively yeah I mean how could you have a criminal trial I mean how could you ever believe that evidence was authentic for example and I don't mean like in 30 years I mean like next year I mean that seems totally disruptive to the way to all of our institutions Well, I, I don't think you could take, say, a random video on the internet and assume it to be true. That's definitely not the case. Um, now, if somebody, say, has some video on their phone or their, their computer with a date stamp and a particular time, I think you know, it, it's more likely to be true than not. Uh, um, you can also crypto cryptographically sign things. Um, like, you know, mathematically, uh, we don't see any way, for example, for uh, AI to um, subvert the fundamentals of mathematics and say uh, figure out how to hash Bitcoin, uh, you know, uh, 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 easily. Um, it's, it's like it's not as uh, AI can't can't defy fundamental math. <laughs> yeah. So um, we can improve the efficiency of Bitcoin hashing algorithms in the silicon, but it, but 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 not. Not fundamentally crack it. Um, so, I guess cryptographic signatures and uh, one one way to do it. Um, but but I'm not so worried. I, I think it's more like um, our, you know, will, will humanity um, c control its destiny or not? Um, will we have a future that is better than the past or not? Um, and not, you know, without we, we can certainly destroy ourselves without the help of AI. Um, you know, that's you look at all of the past civilizations; they didn't have AI. The ones that no. aren't around anymore. They so, had chariots. That's <laughs> enough. Yeah, chariots and uh, chariots were probably a real big deal back then. You know? They were. Um, yeah. So, you've heard people say we should just blow up the server farms because there's no way to once it, this gets rolling, there's no way to slow it down. What do you think of that? Well, the, the the really heavy duty intelligence is not going to be uh, distributed all over the place. It'll be in uh, a limited number of server centers. If you say like very like very sort of deep AI, heavy duty AI, it's not um, it's not going to be in your laptop or your phone. It's it's going to be in you know a situation where there's like a hundred thousand uh, really powerful computers working together in a server center. So it's not. So it's, it's not like subtle, and there there are a limited number of places where that that can happen. In fact, you could you, if you could just you can just look at the heat signature from space, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it'll be very obvious. Um, uh, now, uh, I'm not suggesting we, we go and blow up to service centers right now, but there may be some. It may be wise to have some sort of contingency plan, where, where the government's got an ability to shut down shut down power to. These uh, s server centers, like uh, you don't have to blow it up; you can just cut the power. Um, and what would trip? Or cut connectivity as well. That's another way. Right. Yeah. But what would trip that switch? Do you think in your mind? What would be the threshold that you'd have to pass to warrant the government cutting off your power or cutting off your signal? Well, I mean, I guess if we lost control of some super AI, um, like for some reason, like like the things that would normally work to do a passive shutdown, like the administrator passwords, if they somehow stop working, um, where we, where we can't uh, slow down or or you know. Uh, I'm, I'm not. Sure, I, I don't have a precise answer, but if if there's something that we're concerned about, um, and and uh, the, and, and are, are, are unable to stop it with with uh, software commands, then uh, we probably want to have some kind of hardware off switch. Yes, I think you know can't hurt. Have you talked to <laughs> since you know Larry Page one, yeah. and you obviously you know the open AI guys because you started we it. Definitely have one. <laughs> do, do, have you talked to the the people who run these two? The biggest AI companies about this recently. 
I haven't talked to Larry Page uh, in a few years because he got very upset with me about OpenAI. Uh, oh. So when, when, when OpenAI was created, uh, it, it, did, it did shift things into a, from a unipolar world where Google, Google and DeepMind controlled, uh, you know, like I said, three quarters of all the AI talent to where there's now a sort of uh, bipolar world or OpenAI and Google DeepMind and they're uh, and now, weirdly, so it, it seems uh, open eyes are maybe ahead. Um, so, uh, so I, I have had conversations with um, the open AI team, Sam Altman. I haven't talked to Larry Page because he doesn't want to talk to me anymore uh, for a few years. Uh, Can I ask you just about, since you've been around a lot of this, the thinking? So why would anyone not be a speciesist, be human-centered in his thinking about technology? Like what's the thinking there? Um, I think what he's trying to say is that, um, if I were to guess, uh, that he that uh, all consciousness uh, should be treated uh, equally, um, and whether that is digital or biological. Hmm. And you disagree. I disagree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially if the uh, digital. Uh, consciousness or whatever you want to call it, digital intelligence, uh, decides to curtail the biological intelligence. Right. So you're just building your own slave master, and why would you do that? Doesn't sound great. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, we should not we, we should at least, uh, we, no need to rush, you know. <laughs> like, what's the hurry? <laughs> Where, where's the fire? <laughs> How, uh, well, what, I mean, tell us about the hurry. So this for I know you've been talking about this for years, and on the sort of the periphery of our attention, we've heard Elon Musk talking about AI. But for most people, it's been like three months since they've had any interaction with this at all. Um, so what's the timeline here? At what point does it start to really change our society, do you think? I think it starts to have a, uh, probably a, a, an impact this year, I, I think. Um, so you've got a massive expansion of um, GPT-4-based systems, um, and many companies trying to emulate uh, GPT-4. Um, and you've got OpenAI is going to come out with GPT-5 end of this year, which will be yet another significant improvement. Um, and I, I was there for GPT-1, 2, 3, 4. You know, so GPT-1 was terrible. Um, like you, if, you, if you tried it, you'd be like, "This is, this ain't going anywhere. It seems lame." Um, uh, and then GPT two, you started to see kind of like an inkling of like, "Well, maybe this could be something useful." And then GPT three was a huge improvement, uh, and now it's like, "Wow, okay, this is, it's still spouting a lot of BS, but it's, you know, it's uh, coherent BS." Um, yes. And then GPT four, uh, now it's like writing poetry, um, and. Pretty decent poetry, actually. Pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. The skill at rhyming is incredible. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's coherent. Yes, it is. Uh, it, it's even got a narrative. Like, like, yes, so you've got that's a, right. Yeah. So you could say that's like... That's hard to do. Like most humans can't do that. That's true. So it's already past the point of what most humans can do. Uh, most humans cannot write as well as uh, uh, ChatGPT. Um, and they certainly, and, and no, no human can write that well that fast, as right. the best of my knowledge. Uh, so... Uh, maybe Shakespeare. Um, so, so then, how how much better will GPT five be? And how about GPT six or seven? How can you have a democracy with technology like that? I mean, if democracy is you know government by the people, each person's vote is equal to every other person's vote. I mean, and people are choosing their votes freely. Can can you have a democracy with this? Well, that's why I raise the concern of. Um, uh, of AI being a significant influence in elections. Um, and, and even if you say that AI doesn't have agency, well, it's very likely that people will use the AI um, as a tool uh, in elections. Um, and then, it, you know, if the AI is smart enough, it, it, are they using the tool or is the tool using them? So I think things, things are getting weird, and they're getting weird fast. And so I think we should be concerned about this, and we should have regulatory oversight. That's, that's why I, I think it's a big deal. 
Um, and I think uh, social media companies uh, really need to put a lot of attention into ensuring that the uh, things that get um, created and, and promoted are that we're dealing with real people, not with a million chat GBTs pretending to be people. Exactly. Do you think, speaking of social media, you bought Twitter famously, you've got a lot of other businesses and a lot going on. Yes. You said you bought it because you believe in speech, free speech. You've had a lot of hassle since you bought it. In retrospect, was it worth buying it? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, it remains to be seen as to whether this was uh, financially smart. Uh, currently, it is. It is not. Uh, you know, we just revalued the company at less than half of uh, the acquisition price. Did you really? Yes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, no, it, my my timing was terrible for for when the uh, offer was made because it was uh, you know right before advertising plummeted and yeah. um, you you caught the high water mark I noticed yeah yeah so I must be a real genius here um, my <laughs> my timing is amazing <laughs> um, since I bought it for at least twice as much as it should have been bought for um, but some things are priceless and. Um, so the, the f whether I lose money or not, that is a secondary issue compared to uh, ensuring the uh, strength of democracy uh, and free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy. Yes. Um, and any, the, the speech needs to be as uh, transparent and truthful as possible. Um, so we've, we've got a, a huge push uh, on Twitter to be as truthful as possible. We've got this uh, community notes feature, which is great. It um, is great. It is awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's like... I saw it this morning. Yeah. It was far more honest than the New York Times. It's, it's great. Yeah. We put a lot of effort to ensuring that Community Notes does not get gamed or, or have biases. Uh, it is simply cares about what, what is the most accurate thing. Um, and, you know, sometimes truth can be a little bit elusive, but you, yes. it, but you can still aspire to get closer to it. Yes. Um, uh, you know, and so... Um, and, and I think the, the effect of uh, Community Notes uh, is more powerful than, than people may realize because once people know that they, they could get noted, um, you know, community noted on Twitter, then uh, they'll think the, more carefully about what they say. Uh, they are likely, it, basically it's an encouragement to be more truthful and less deceptive. Yes, and if uh, the notes themselves are truthful, then it yes, will have the effect. Absolutely. Uh, and all of that is open source. All the community notes is open source. So you can read about every community note. You can see exactly how the algorithm works. You can, you can, you can register, say like, oh, we need to make this change or that change. Um, so it, everything is super open book with, with community notes. There's no, no black box. When you jumped into this, though, when you bought it, did you understand, well, clearly you understood its importance, you wouldn't have bought it. Uh, Twitter, yes. Right. But it, it's not the biggest, but it's the most important in the social media companies. But did you understand the kind of ferocity you'd be facing, the attacks you'd be facing from power centers in the country? Um, I thought there'd probably be some um, negative reactions, yes. <laughs> uh, so I'm, not, I, I'm sure everyone would not be pleased with, the, uh, with, with it. Um, but um, at the end of the day, you know, if, if, if the public is happy with it, that's what matters. Um, and the public will speak with their actions. Oh, the, the, I mean, the, 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 you, if, if they find truth Twitter to be useful, they will use it more. And if they find it to be not useful, they will use it less. If they find it to be the best source of truth, I think they will use it more. Um, so that, that's my theory. Um, and so uh, even though, you know, n now there's, there's obviously <laughs> a lot of um, organizations that are used to having sort of unfettered influence uh, on Twitter. Um, that no longer have that. We well, used the New York Times of their of their badge this morning, and then you called them diarrhea. You called them. <laughs> okay. You did. You did. I'm just I'm just quoting you. You you, yes. you described their Twitter feed as diarrhea. I, I said it was the Twitter equivalent Twitter equivalent of diarrhea. Okay, it's not literally diarrhea, but no, no it's a yeah. you know, it's a metaphor, um, <laughs> <laughs> but an accurate one. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, if you look at the uh, at NY Times uh, Twitter feed, it's uh, unreadable. Uh, it's like, they, because what they do is they, they tweet every single article, even the ones that are uh, boring, even ones that don't make it into the paper. So, uh, so it's just nonstop, is a zillion tweets a day with no, uh, you know, they, they really should just be saying, like, what are the top tweets? Yes. You know, like, what, 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 are the, what, are the, what are the big stories of the day? Uh, I don't know, put out, like, 
10 or something, you know, so some number that's manageable, um, as opposed to right now, if you, if you were to follow it, uh, NY, at NY Times on Twitter, you're going to get barraged with like hundreds of tweets a day. Yeah. Um, and your whole feed will be filled with NY Times. So um, that, that's, that's, uh, this is something I would recommend actually for all publications, uh, which is uh, for your primary feed, um, only put out your best stuff. Uh, don't put out everything. Um, you, or you could have a second feed that is here's everything, um, but then but have a have your primary feed be here's our best stuff. If, if uh, any um, uh, media organization or individual uh, j just uh, ha have <laughs> don't put out hundreds of tweets a day. Just put out like ten good ones um, or five good ones. Or or and if if it's a slow news day, don't put out any. Maybe put out two, one or two. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, don't 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 try to say we're always going to put out uh, 100 tweets, even if uh, you know if it's World War Three or a bicycle accident was the biggest news. You know, it, it's got to be like <laughs> yeah. news that it's it, it's got to you got to earn your earn earn your play earn someone's attention. Yes. Um, so, just in in, in general, um, you know, I kind of think I know a thing or two about how to use Twitter because uh, you know I, I was the most interacted with account on the whole system uh, before the acquisition. Before, before the acquisition closed. I didn't have the most number of followers, but I had the most number of interactions. And so I clearly know uh, something about how to use Twitter. Um, and so people should uh, you know, listen to my advice, I think. Um, uh, so you know, people's attention is limited, so just make sure you put the stuff that's most important there. So because y you, know, you and people like you do interact on Twitter, it's yeah. obviously enormously powerful in shaping public opinion. It's where a lot of ideas and trends are incubated. Yeah. You know it, that's why you Absolutely. bought it. It's also a magnet for intel agencies from around the world. And yes. one of the things we learned after you started opening the books is that they were exerting influence from within Twitter. I mean, it was absurd. Um, Did you know that going in? No. Uh, well, uh, well, so, so things like, I, I have a... Um, I, since, since I've been a heavy Twitter user since 2009, um, my it, it's it's sort of like I'm in the matrix. I mean, I can see like things do things feel right? Do they not feel right? What what tweets are, am I being shown as recommended? Uh, like like I, I get a feel like what, what accounts are making comments? Uh, where are the comments uh, eerily similar? Yeah. Um, and uh, and then you look at the account, and it's just obviously a fake photo, and uh, you know, uh, they, they, it's, it's just obviously a bot cluster uh, yes. over and over again. Um, so this is actually so, so I started to get like just more and more uneasy about the the, the Twitter situation, um, and um, I mean my and my initial goal was 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 actually not not to acquire Twitter. Um, <laughs> I mean the the actual sequence of events was that I. Um, I was looking at. Um, I, 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 I held a Twitter poll to say, like, should I sell some of my Tesla stock? Because I was getting, you know, a couple of years ago, I was getting um, attacked a lot for like allegedly not paying taxes. Um, uh, and uh, now I've actually paid a tremendous amount of taxes. Um, now there was one year I didn't pay taxes because I had overpaid taxes in the prior year. <laughs> and, the, and you know when they had that like IRS uh, yeah. leak uh, BS, they knew that I had overpaid taxes in the prior year. But they said, "Oh, Elon Musk didn't pay taxes in 2017 or whatever it was." And I was like, "But you know that the reason I didn't pay taxes is because I overpaid the prior year. But you didn't mention that, so that was deceptive." Um, anyway, so the, 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 but there, you know the Elizabeth Warrens of the world and Bernie Sanders like saying, "Oh, you know." Uh, I'm, I'm not selling stock, and, and I'm not paying taxes, and I and so I so so I'm like, look, I don't know what the right thing to do is here. I thought the right thing to do was to, to not sell stock. The captain should be the last one to leave the ship. That's right. Um, and um, I thought I was doing the right thing by not selling stock, and now I'm being told I'm doing the the wrong thing um, by by you know clinging onto the stock and not paying taxes. So I held a Twitter poll to say, which what do you guys want? Should I sell? I don't know, 10 percent of my Tesla stock or, or, or not. I'll buy by the results of the poll. And uh, on, that's like 60% of people said, yeah, you should sell 10%. So I did. Um, so then I had a bunch of cash. And um, I'm like, what should I do with this? Uh, at the time, the, the Federal Reserve rates were super low. So it's just like sitting in the, you know, I guess the... Your checking account? Well, 
in the t in the T bill account, or, yeah. you know, money market account, whatever. Um, the yeah, the whole banking thing is a whole separate subject. Um, <laughs> I know it's a little thing, a thing or two about finance. Um, but, um, so, uh, so then I'm sitting with this money in the account. It's earning less than the rate of inflation. So the rate of inflation is, is much higher. Than, <laughs> so we've got, we've got high inflation. It's, I'm earning peanuts in the money market account. Well, this is dumb. I'm getting like minus. Yeah, it's just evaporating. Yeah, I'm getting minus like 6 or 7% return here, uh, maybe worse. And um, so then, well, it's like, what stock should I buy? Um, and I, you know, believe in buying stocks of companies where you use the product. Um, and uh, Apple's got a competing uh, electric vehicle car program, so uh, you know, I like Apple products. We're not going to invest in them because they've got a competing, uh, you know, autonomous EV program. And um, so, what's the other product that I use a lot? Oh, Twitter. Okay, so I'll, you know, it put the money in Twitter. It's better than just having it in, you know, ne negative six percent inflation situation. Um, so, so I like bought, put a bunch of it, bought a, bought, bought a bunch of Twitter stock. Uh, not like I said, not with the intent of buying the company. Just you know, it's better than keeping it in a money market. Do you remember how much you bought? Um, I think it was like eight percent or something of the company. Um, I was talking to some of the board members, um, and then and then they, they said, "Hey, well, do you want to do you want to join the board?" So I was like, "Well, I don't. I generally don't want to be on boards, uh, but." Because uh, it's boring, um, and I have a lot of things to do. Uh, but I do care about the direction of Twitter, so I'll consider being on the board. And I thought about it for about a week or, t or so. And then, but then, based on the conversations that I was having with the management team and the board, um, I came to the conclusion, rightly or wrongly, that um, that. If I joined the board, they they would not listen to me. So then I'm like, huh, okay. Then I, I would just be a Quisling, you know. I don't want to be some sort of just, you know, go along for the ride Quisling situation, um, and and if a collaborator effectively. Um, right. So, and and it really felt like I started I was starting to feel like, wait a second, like it's weird, th the, the, something, something's like something's not right in this, you know. Something's wrong in the state of Denmark here. There's, 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 something feels wrong about the platform. It's, it seemed to be just drifting in, in a. I, I couldn't place it exactly. Just ahead of, it, it felt like it was drifting in a bad direction. So then I was like, and and my conversations with the, the board and management seemed to confirm my intuition about that. So then I was like, okay. Um, but basically, I was convinced these guys do, do not care about fixing Twitter, uh, and and uh, and I had a bad feeling about where I was headed based on the conversations, conversations I had with them. So then I was like, you know what? I, I I'll try acquiring it and see if that's see if acquiring it is is possible. Um, now I didn't have enough cash to acquire it, so I would need you know support from others, um, from some of the existing investors. Uh, I would also need like a lot of debt and. Um, so it wasn't clear to me whether a, an acquisition would succeed, but I thought I would try. And uh, ultimately, it, it did succeed. Um, so anyway, here we are. Um, but when you got there, and all of a sudden you own it, and all the data on the service belongs to you. And well, it belongs be, to the people, in my view, but yes. But, but you can see what I, it is, and you can yes. see what they've been doing, and you can see who's been working there. You, you were shocked to find out that various intel agencies were affecting its operations? Uh, the, the, the degree to which uh, various government agencies were effectively uh, had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, because the DMs are not encrypted. So one of the first, you know, one of the things that we're about to release uh, is the ability to encrypt your DMs. That's pretty heavy duty, though, because a lot of well-known people, reporters talking to their sources, government officials, the richest people yeah. in the world, sure. they're DMing each other. And the assumption, obviously, it was incorrect, but was that that's private, but that was being read by various governments? Uh, yeah, that seems to be, yes. It's scary. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, so. Um, like I said, we're moving to um, have the 
DMs be optionally encrypted? I mean, you know, there's like a lot of DM conversations which are, you know, just chatting with friends. It's For not, sure. not not important. Of course. Um, uh, but but so so, you, so we we're, that's hopefully coming out later this month, uh, but no later than next month. Uh, is the ability to toggle encryption on or, on or off. So if you if you ha are in a conversation you think is sensitive, you can just toggle encryption on, and then no one on Twitter can see wh what you're talking about. They, they could put a gun to my head, and I couldn't I couldn't tell I couldn't. Uh, the, the, you know, that, that's sort of the gun to the head test. If, if somebody puts a gun to my head, and I, can I still not uh, see your DMs? That should be that's the acid test. Yes. Um, and that's how that's that's how it should be. If you want your have you had complaints from various governments about doing this? I haven't had direct complaints to me. I've had sort of like some indirect complaints. I think people are a little concerned about complaining to me directly in case I tweet about it. <laughs> 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 you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're like, uh-oh. Uh, so they're sort of trying to be more roundabout than that. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, if, if, if I got something that was uh, unconstitutional from the U.S. government, I would say, uh, my reply would be to send them a copy of the you know, First Amendment and just say, like, uh, what part of this are we getting wrong? <laughs> you have a lot of government. You have a lot of government it's curious. What part of this so. are we getting wrong? Please tell me. I mean, it's a pretty. No, I'm just saying. But you're kind of exposed in your other businesses. So this is a, just in case our viewers aren't following this. This is not. You're not just like a journalist taking a stand on behalf of the First Amendment. You're a guy with big government contracts, giving the finger to the government in some way. No, well, am I giving the finger to the government? I I, I think that there. Are, um, I'm not someone who thinks that uh, you know the government is just sort of. Evil. Uh, right. It's 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 a it's a large bureaucracy. Uh, there are people uh, in, in government uh, who are human beings, and they have the people with good motivations, occasionally bad motivations. Uh, with with rare exception, the people that I know in government have good motivations and just want to get their job done, and and they actually believe in the constitution, and they're so. I think mo my my opinion is actually most people in the government are good. Um, That's heartening to hear. Yeah, it's it's rare for me to to find someone in the government who I think is perhaps not good. But but you know, it, at, at the highest level of the the, the agencies, there, there are political appointees, as yes. as you know, um, and the political appointees will have a political agenda. Um, and so they, at the at the highest levels of of the various government agencies, there is the ability to put a sort of a political thumb on the scale, uh, even if the uh, people operating the agencies uh, don't agree with that. Um, so, yeah, you know, so that's something to be concerned about. Um, is I'd say I'd be more concerned about, about political appointees, I think, than than um, the, the sort of people, the career people. That's been my experience, at least. Do you think um, Twitter will be as central to this presidential campaign as it was in the last several? I think it will play a significant role. In elections, not just domestically but internationally. Um, so, uh, the, the the goal of New Twitter is to be um, as fair and even-handed as possible. Uh, so, not favoring any political uh, ideology, um, but uh, just um, yeah, be, being being uh, being fair at all. Why doesn't uh, Facebook do this? I know that Zuckerberg has said, and I take him at face value, that he. <laughs> I, I, well, I do. I do really? actually in this way that he is a kind of old-fashioned liberal who doesn't like to censor. He has, but he, you know, like why wouldn't a company like that take the stand that you have taken, which is pretty rooted in American traditional political custom, you know, for free speech. My understanding is that um, Zuckerberg spent uh, $400 million in the last election, nominally in a get out the vote campaign, but really fundamentally in support of Democrats. Is that accurate or not accurate? That is accurate. Yes. Does that sound unbiased to you? No, it doesn't. Yes. <laughs> um, so you don't see hope that Facebook will approach this as a, f a a non-aligned arbiter. I'm unaware of evidence that suggests that path. <laughs> um, do, 
do can you uh, you've you've allowed Donald Trump back on Twitter? He hasn't taken you up on your offer because he's got his own thing. Right. Do you think he will go back on Twitter? Well, that's that's obviously up to him. Um, you know, my, my job is to, uh, I, you know, I, I take the, the freedom of speech just very seriously. So it, it's, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't vote for Donald Trump. I actually voted for Biden. Um, yeah. People think I'm some sort of hardcore, you know, so it's some, it's certainly some of the media try to paint me as like far right or whatever. I'm, right. Uh, in, in, the, the only time I've ever, ever even voted Republican was was once for uh, because I I registered to vote in South Texas and it was for a Mexican American woman for Congress. That's that's literally the only Republican vote I've ever cast in my entire life. Yeah. Um, once, um, and uh, so um, not, not saying I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan of Biden because I, I I would think that would probably be inaccurate, uh, but. Um, you know, we have difficult choices to make in these presidential uh, yep. elections. It's not. I, I I would prefer, frankly, that we 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 put someone, just a normal person, <laughs> as president, yep. a normal person with common sense, uh, and whose values are smack in the middle of the country. You know, just you know, center of the normal distribution, and uh, I think they'll do, that. They would be great. I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> and everyone would be happier. Would you run? Like, why wouldn't you run? I was born here, so. Oh, of course you weren't. Yeah. I, I, to me, it's, it's. I'm a technologist, also. I'm not, not a politician, so it's not like, uh, it, it, you know. I think we have made maybe being president, not that much fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to be totally frank, yeah. Um, it, it is uh, by design a, a relatively weak role. Uh, you know, because it's intended to be uh, balanced by the House and the Senate and the judi judiciary. Um, so, so it's not like, like if you're prime minister in England or Canada, you have far more power than if you're president, because it's like being Speaker of the House right. and being um, president. Uh, you know, so, um, so yeah, you know, presidents like uh, deliberately weak in order to avoid creating a king situation, king queen situation. Um, and, but you get dumped on all day, uh, no matter what you do. Um, yeah. And everything you do is scrutinized. Um, and um, your life is not your own. Um, and if, if, if you, if you had <laughs> any, any skeletons you've got in the closet will be trotted out and, uh, you know, braided down Main Street. Um, and even if they don't exist, they'll make them up and uh, fake it, whatever. They will, politics is a blood sport. Yeah. So it's, it's not something I'd want to do. Um, so I got one last thread I just, that you alluded to. You said, "Don't get me started on the banks." So you've uh, seen, well, so you've seen a couple of regional bank collapses. Yeah, and we've been told that's not a big deal. That these are isolated and each one collapsed for unique reasons. They're not. It's not systemic in any sense. What, what's your sense? Your sense of the stability of the American banking system? Well, it's it's actually at this point a global banking system of problem. It is. Um, so, the uh, you know we have a situation here where it's not merely it's not that the the canary in the coal mine has died, but the miners are starting to die too. The you know the <laughs> <laughs> so and, and you know Silicon Valley Bank uh, collapsing uh, overnight um, is a one hell of a big canary. You know, it's more like a turkey. I mean it's. Not just it's not like some small fry thing. Yeah. Um, it's big fry, so or medium fry, uh, and then uh, uh, Credit Suisse, uh, which is uh, I think was formed in the mid 1800s, um, was basically sold for pennies on the dollar, uh, forced to merge with UBS, and even then required uh, backstop by the Swiss government. I mean, like, hello guys, maybe we have issues here. Maybe things aren't all great. Uh, they're, they're definitely not all great. Uh, Maybe it's be more more forceful here. Um, the uh, I think that there there is a serious danger uh, with the uh, global banking system. Um, there's there's a strong argument that the uh, if you were to actually uh, mark to market the portfolios of the banks, the loans and whatnot. Uh, that the entire banking industry would have negative equity. 
it feels that way. Yes. Um, so if you look at, say, uh, commercial real estate, like offices and whatnot, the whole work from home thing has substantially reduced uh, office usage uh, in cities around the world. Um, and, um, you know, I think, I think San Francisco is a 40% uh, off. You know, for, for San Francisco is like an extreme example, but it's like, I think it's on 40% vacancy. Um, uh, even, even New York has, uh, I think almost all cities at this point have, have record vacancies in commercial real estate. So um, now, now the commercial real estate used to be something that was a grade A asset. Um, that uh, if a bank had commercial real estate holdings, th those would be considered of the highest uh, se security, the safe, sure. some of the safest, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, assets you could have. Now that is not the case anymore. Uh, you, you, one company after another is canceling their leases or not renewing their leases, uh, or if they go bankrupt, you ha the, 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 there's nothing for the the bank who owns that real estate to go after because they're. You know, previously strong company now dead. What do you, what do you, what do you go after at that point? Um, so we really haven't seen the commercial real estate shoe drop. That's more like an anvil, not a shoe. Um, so the, the stuff we've seen thus far <laughs> actually hasn't even. It, 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 it's, it's only slightly uh, um, real estate portfolio degradation. Uh, but that will become a very serious thing later this year, in my in my view. Um, I think if we see, which we're likely to see, a drop in house prices because the uh, interest rates are too high, and uh, for most people when buying a house, they look at the monthly payment. Of course. Um, if you're a 30-year 30, 30 mortgage, uh, the vast majority of it is interest. So if the Fed rate is high, um, you have a um, a high base interest rate. Effectively, the, the price you can pay for the house drops because you now have to pay more interest, which means that if you've got a, a fixed monthly payment, you can now afford to buy a house for less, less money. It effectively drops the, the prices of houses. Yes. Um, uh, this is the kind of thing that tends to accelerate. Uh, so that, so that, that then you can get negative equity in the home market as well. And so, so if, if banks end up having loan losses in both their commercial and, well, they're definitely going to have loan losses in their commercial portfolio, but also in their mortgage portfolio, this is um, a dire situation. Um, the, the, there, there, is, there is a solution to mitigate the uh, magnitude of the damage here, which is for the Fed to lower the rate. Uh, but uh, they raise the rate again. Um, now, uh, if I recall correctly, which I, you know, important caveat, I, I think the last time the, the Fed raised rates going into a recession was 1929. What happened next? Yeah, the Great Depression. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, the, the concern, I'm going to tell so, you nothing you don't know, but the concern is if the Fed drops rates again, then inflation will accelerate, and you can't do that in an election year. <laughs> So, inflation is going to happen no matter what. Huh. If you increase the money supply, um, you get inflation. Right. So, there's, no, there's not some magical cure for getting rid of inflation, um, except to increase the productivity, the output, output of uh, goods and services. So, if you say, like, like what is money? Um, you've, got, you've, got, you've got these sort of... Um, it's basically numbers in a database that's that that sum up to some come up to some total. Then you've got the uh, output of goods and services of the economy, and the it, as long as the ratio of money to ratio of, of, of goods and services stays if that if that stays constant, you have no no inflation. If uh, if you add more money if you add money to the system faster than you increase uh, goods and services, right. then you have inflation. Um, so. All of these COVID sort of stimulus bills uh, were not paid for. They were they were just generated more uh, currency, more, more you know, uh, more, more money was, was was created because the the, the federal government uh, the checks never the, the, the checks always pass uh, you know until, unless you hit a debt limit, which there's probably going to be some debt limit crisis later this year. But uh, provided you haven't hit the debt limit, the the federal government, uh, unlike state governments or city governments uh, or individuals, can simply issue more money, um, and that's what they did. Um, 
I mean, as old saying goes, there's no, there's no free lunch. Um, so uh, if you could just issue massive amounts of money without negative consequences, why don't we just take that to the limit, make everyone a trillionaire? Well, well they, I mean, they tried that in Venezuela. How'd that, how'd that work out? Well, they had to eat zoo animals. Right. It's not good, you know. Um, you get to the point where the, you, you know, sort of Weimar Germany type stuff where you could, like, you know, <laughs> take, bring in the cash to the store in a wheelbarrow. Um, yes. So... Uh, there's no free lunch. There's, there's not some ability to issue money and not have inflation. Uh, it, the, 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 this is just, I, I, yeah. Um, so, so the inflation will happen. Um, and there's no, fiddling with the, the, the Fed rate is not going to affect that, really. Um, uh, but what, what the, the, a high Fed rate can cause a lot of damage uh, in shifting funds um, in the wrong direction. So um, the, the long-term return on, say, the S&P 500, uh, I believe is, depending on how you count it, around uh, 6%. Um, so as, as if the Fed real rate of return starts to approach what the um, long-term return is on the stock market, why would you keep any money in the stock market? You would, should simply buy treasury bills. Of course. Um, because the treasury bills is, is a certainty, whereas the stock market fluctuates. Right. Um, this, this is pretty basic. Uh, also, why would you keep money in a bank savings account if you can put it in what's called a money market account, which is an account that represents t uh, treasury bills? Uh, if the treasury bill money market account uh, gives you, you know, 4 to 5 percent interest and the bank savings account only gives you 2 percent, uh, you'd be a fool to keep the money in the bank savings account. So the, 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 the Fed has made a tremendous mistake by going this high uh, with, with, their, with their rate, um, and they need to drop it immediately. Do you think they will? They, yes, they, 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 they will have no choice but to drop it, I think, uh, later this year. Um, the, the, part of the issue is that the Fed is... Um, an old institution and has a lot of latency in its data. So it's like driving a car along a cliffside road, a windy cliffside road, uh, while looking at the rearview mirror. Uh, but not even actually the rearview mirror, a video that was taken of the rearview mirror that's three months old. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, now if, you're on a, if you're on a straight road, yeah, that works out okay because nothing's changing, or it's only slightly, slightly bending road. But we're more along like the we're doing the Highway One PCH uh, trip here, um, and so you really want to look out the front window. <laughs> Very <laughs> when important. you're in Big Sur, yes. If you're on a cliffside road where you could punch your doom, so uh, yes, you want to look out the front window. Uh, you want to look at the sort of uh, forward commodity prices, like, like look look at the look at what the forward contracts are, are, are predicting for. Uh, commodity prices, um, and not uh, not not some uh, la laboriously slow government data collection process uh, that, uh, like they'll claim to have, for example, December data. That's not December. That's not the data of December. It's the data that arrived in December. Right. Exactly. I mean, think about it, like how good is the government at actually collecting data? Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that's what I mean. It's like three months old. Uh, with lots of errors. So if you had a hundred <laughs> grand in your bank, making decisions on that basis is insane. So, so, so like, what, <laughs> what should the average non-rich person do on the cusp of what you're describing, which is economic catastrophe? Like, how do you protect yourself? Um. I think I think uh, probably a smart move overall, and this this is guidance that I think applies across the ages. Is if there are companies in whose products you believe, um, yeah. buy and hold the stock, um, and and when 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 the, whenever else is panicking, uh, then buy more, and when everyone else thinks that that uh, the stock is going to the moon, sell it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, sort of the buy. Um, low sell high. Uh, so you're not an index fund guy. Like you pick specific stocks. 
I that's my my. You have to say like, what, what, what is the purpose of a company? Why should a company exist? Um, a company exists. It's a group of people uh, collected together to to provide products and services. It's right. not it's not a thing in and of itself. It's just a group of people. That's like it's hard if it was just one person making. You, know, you can make cupcakes yourself, but you can't make cars by yourself. Um, yes. So, uh, if so, so that, so that therefore the value of a company is a function of the. Um, quality of the products and services that it's that it has created and will create, and so if if, you're, if there's a company that you think, well, this company's got a lot of exciting products that I think are awesome, um, their current products are good, that's probably a company to invest in, because that's the reason companies exist to yes. produce goods and services th that you like, and so. Um, now, I mean, there's some caveats here to make sure you you're not like investing when. Ever, when it's like the hottest thing, you know, because then it's going to have be at a temporary high. Um, but you know, w w when 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 it, it's not sort of at a weirdly temporary high, I think just generally looking at a company and saying, well, I like the products and services of that company, and I like where they're going, and the ma the, the management seems sensible, and th then I think buying and holding that stock is probably the right move. Um, I'm probably doing that with with a few companies. Um, uh, that's what I'd recommend. Um, I think the on the I mean I I could really go on at length about the financial system and the, and the stock market and everything, um, but the I mean these days I think we've gotten a little too far into the index passive fund yep. uh, world. Um, like somebody at some point's got to make a decision. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> you know. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, uh, and and by the way, there there's like they're, betting on both red and black. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. Well, betting on red and black in in a casino situation where it could come up green, right? Um, and you're you're bound to lose. Yeah. So over, the longer you play, the worse you do. Um, now, the the stock market is is kind of like the opposite of a casino, which is the longer you play, the more likely you, you are to, to to succeed. That historically has been the case, and I think will continue to be the case. Um, so. Uh, but but it's really just important not not to panic. Uh, if you if you buy a stock and you you read something terrible in the newspaper, you want to just remember the news has got a negative bias. Uh, just and think about whether are the products of the company still sound? Does it have a good product roadmap? Do you believe in the management? If so, ignore what the press says. Or if if the price drops when the when there's a negative article, buy the stock. So here's um, here's my last question. And you mentioned the press. You've been the subject of press coverage for you know like a long time. Sure. But very intense. Media coverage for the last year. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, it seems that way. Anyway, yeah. um, w how has your opinion of the press changed? Um, well, um, so my first company way back in the day, and the sort of Pre-Cambrian era of the internet or the World Wide Web, um, it was up to we actually helped bring a number of the media organizations online. So most newspapers are not online. Uh, we helped bring hun hundreds of newspapers and magazines online for the first time. Uh, we added a tremendous amount of functionality to their websites uh, w with our software. Uh, the New York Times Company uh, and Knight Ritter were uh, major investors and were on the board. Uh, I spent a lot of time in newsrooms. Uh, so I'm not unfamiliar with uh, the media. Uh, I got to see it firsthand uh, all the way back in like 1996. So it's been a while. Sort of traditional media certainly had um, revenue challenges uh, because a as online advertising has increased uh, and it's much more measurable and much more sort of direct. You can say like I spent this amount and got this this output. You know like. Uh, you, it's interactive, uh, un unlike say a newspaper or broadcast right. TV. Um, you're you're kind of guessing with a newspaper and broadcast TV. That's right. Um, it, whereas if it's, if something's online, uh, you can tell immediately that uh, that person saw the ad and bought the product. Um, that's it's very very immediate. So, um, and it's it, it's actually uh, more effective if the advertising is, is is customized to the individual. So so the advertising is more likely to be relevant. Whereas broadcast, if, if if it's being shown to everyone, it's, it's going to be irrelevant to most people. Um, the the result of that has been a huge shift in advertising revenue from uh, 
say new, uh, newspapers and, and uh, TV to uh, you know the G Googles and Facebooks of the world, and uh, a tiny bit to Twitter. <laughs> I think Twitter gets like one one percent of re advertising revenue is, is quite tiny. Um, so th th this this is uh, meant a shrinking pie, obviously, for uh, most uh, of the traditional media companies, um, and made them more desperate to uh, get uh, clicks, to get to get you know get attention, um, and uh, it just made them when you know when they were ha when they were in a sort of a desperate state, they will then tend to really push. Uh, Headlines that get the most clicks, whether those headlines are accurate or not. Um, so it's resulted, in my view, I think, probably, I think most people would agree, uh, a, a less truthful, less accurate news. Um, so uh, because they, they just got to get a rise out of people, um, and uh, I think it's also increased the negativity of the news because yeah. uh, I think we. Humans instinctually uh, respond more to negative. I think we have an instinctual negative bias, uh, which, which kind of makes sense in that, like, uh, if, if um, like, let's say, you're, you're, uh, like, it's more important to remember where we, where was the lion, or where was the tribe that wants to kill my tribe, than where is the bush with berries. Yes. Like one's like a permanent negative outcome. <laughs> and the other is like, well, I might go hungry. <laughs> yeah. So, mean, meaning that like there's an asymmetry in, um, sort of an evolved asymmetry in negative versus positive stuff. Um, and, and, and also historically, the negative stuff would have been quite proximate. Like it would have been near, uh, represented a real danger to you as a person um, if you heard negative news. You, you, because Historically, you know, like a few hundred years ago, we, we're not hearing about what negative things are happening on the other side of the world, or, or on the other side of the country. We're only we're hearing about negative things in our village, um, things that could actually have a, 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 a bad effect on you. Whereas now we're hearing about, I mean, the news very often seems to attempt to uh, answer the question, what is the worst thing that happened on Earth today? <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why you're sad after reading that, you know? Um, and then use the, the most inflammatory language. Um, you know, because it, every day they got to sell sell the advertising, um, even if it's it happened to be a slow news day. Do you read any legacy media outlets? I mean, I read a lot. Um, so, um, I, I mean, I really get most of my news from Twitter at this point. Um, so, it, it is the number one. News news source, I think, uh, in the world at this point. Yes. Um, so, uh, and, and thus, all, all the more important that we we strive to uh, to be accurate. And 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 not it's not just a question of accuracy, but we also need to uh, allow the people to uh, develop the narratives that are of interest to them. So it's possible for um, news to be technically truthful, but not. But but that, but they're still deciding what the narrative is, uh, like like let's say you wanted um, <laughs> like you, you, let's say you took a, a photo of someone and they had a little zit. Um, now you could zoom in on the zit and make it look gigantic, uh, like Mount Vesuvius, um, and it is still true that they have a zit. It's just not the size of Mount Vesuvius, and they you know it doesn't properly reflect their face. <laughs> Their face is not one giant set, but you could you could say like, well, it's true. But it, have they lied? They haven't. You know, they're just happy to zoom in on the zit um, and not look at the the, the rest of the face uh, type of thing. So, um, and what I'm saying is that the that choice of narrative is uh, is extremely important. Um, and at the point at which, if if there's only like say. Uh, Half a dozen editors in chief, or maybe even fewer than that. Maybe it's only three or four uh, that are deciding what the narrative is, what's going to be on the front page. Uh, then, um, you know, th th that that that's that's a form of manipulation of public opinion. I think the public often doesn't appreciate, and is perhaps the most pernicious of all. That's right, because it's the most subtle. Yeah, it's the most subtle. They haven't said an untrue thing. They've just chosen what they're going to focus on. A man called Douglas Mack. He's facing ten years in prison for posting. What he believed were funny memes on Twitter. 
What do you make of that case? I don't know the details of that case. Um, I've, I've, you know, I've read a little bit about it. You may, you probably know more about it than I do. Uh, uh, <laughs> I certainly don't think someone should go to prison for a long period of time for posting meme, memes on Twitter. In, in which case, we've, we're going to have a very, very full prison. Um, so, and if, if we're talking about election interference, well, there's quite a few people that should be on trial for that. Uh, for much far more serious crimes than than memes on on Twitter, far more serious. Yes, um, the Twitter files kind of showed that I think. Yes. Um, so, you know, unless this unless this person really did, I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't know I don't, everything that was was shown at the trial. Has, has, has he been convicted? Is this yes, he was so convicted on Friday. Uni unanimous jury jury verdict. Yes. What was the venue? New York what? City. Hmm. Okay. It was a hung, it was in Brooklyn, and it was a hung jury. And a hung jury. That's not unanimous then. Uh, well, the judge prodded the jury. Okay. And uh, and they reached unanimous guilty verdict. It'll be appealed. So, how many? What percentage of your staff did you fire at Twitter? One of the great business stories of the year. <laughs> I think we're about we're about twenty uh, percent of uh, the original size. Uh, so eighty percent left. Uh, yes. So. I mean, a lot of people voluntarily. Sure, 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 but but it's eighty percent are gone from the day that, you took over. Correct. Yes. So how do you run the company with only twenty percent of the staff? Uh, it turns out uh, you don't need uh, all that many people to run Twitter. But eighty percent—that's a lot. Um, yes. Uh, over. I mean, if you're, if you're not trying to run some sort of uh, glorified activist organization, uh, with with, uh, and you're not. Care that much about censorship, then uh, you can really let go of a lot of people. Turns out. <laughs> <laughs> how many others, without naming names, but how many? I had dinner with somebody who runs a big company recently. Who said, "I'm really inspired by Elon." And I said, Do you, "The free speech stuff." He goes, "No, the firing <laughs> the staff stuff." Yeah. Um, how many? How many other CEOs have come to you um, to talk about this? Um. You know, I, I I spend a lot of time at work, uh, so th it's not like I'm meeting with lots of people. They see what I what actions I've taken, um, and um, but I, I think we just had a situation at Twitter where it was uh, absurdly overstaffed. You know, so it wasn't uh, you know like you, you look at say like what does it really take to operate Twitter? Um, you know, uh, most of what we're talking about here is a, a group text uh, service at scale, um, like. How many people are really needed for that? You know, um, and if you look at the, you say like, uh, what has been the product development uh, over time with Twitter? And you like so like you know years versus product improvements, and it's like a pretty flat line. So what are they doing? You know, uh, it took a year to add an edit button that doesn't work most of the time. I mean, this is I feel like it was a comedy situation here. You know. Um, you're not making cars, you know. Uh, it's very difficult to make cars um, or get rockets to orbit. So, um, you know, it, it, the real question is like, how did it get so absurdly overstaffed? Uh, this is insane. Um, so, anyway, that's and it's clearly working. Um, in fact, I think it's working better than ever. It's it, we, we've increased the uh, responsiveness of the system by, in some cases, over eighty percent. Um, the there's a core piece of code uh, for generating the, the, the timeline, which is run literally billions of times a day. Uh, we've uh, cut that code from 700,000 lines to 70,000 lines uh, run. <laughs> yeah, and, and the code efficiency by over 80%. Like, meaning the, how much compute is necessary to render the timeline Yeah. by 80%. I mean, this is, uh, you know, in four, four or five months. Uh, we've, we've increased the video time from um, roughly two minutes or best case uh, 10 minutes to now two hours so you can put two hours of video on, on, on Twitter. We'll soon be uh, increasing that to uh, really where there's no, no meaningful limit. Uh, we've increased uh, the tweet length from uh, 240 characters to 4,000. Uh, we'll be increasing that to where there's again no meaningful length to if you want to post a novel on Twitter you should be able to do it. Um, and. Um, 
you know, we, as, as everyone saw on Friday, we open sourced the super embarrassing recommendation algorithm, uh, which we were taking apart and eviscerating, uh, which is exactly what I had hoped they would do, um, and pointing out all the nonsense. Um, and uh, we're going to open source more, um, and we're, we're going to subject it to uh, public, public review. We're obviously going to get criticized a lot because people will point out all of the, the foolish things that are, that, that are happening in the code, but then we'll fix it, and we'll fix it fast and, and in, pub in full public view. Um, and I think th that's the kind of thing that, that owns the public trust. You know, if, 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 because like, don't take my word for it. It's just, this is, we, we, you can literally read the code and you can read what people say about the code. Um, and, um, and you can see the improvements that we make and you can see, you'll be able to see the, like in real time, live, uh, see, see, see it get better. Um, so my prediction is that this, I, I would be surprised if this does not lead the public to think, okay, this, this is something that I can trust. Um, I mean, I, I think far more trust, trustworthy than, say, other social media organizations that have some mysterious black box that they refuse to show, the, show how it works. I mean, what are they trying to hide? What are they so trying to hide? Just not good things. Yeah. If, if they had to have something to hide, why don't they show it? But, but they won't. Because it's a proprietary business secret. Yeah, sure. So, uh, my, my, you know, so we're, we're trying to make make Twitter the most trusted place on the internet. The, the, the where you can get the the you know the, the the least untrustworthy place on the internet. I don't think anyone should trust the internet, but but maybe we can make Twitter the least untrustworthy. Um, and uh, you know where you can see a wide range of uh, political opinions, so including ones you disagree with. I think people should be exposed to things they disagree with. Um, so it shouldn't just be continuous self-reinforcement of like what, you know. So um, that's, that's the goal. And uh, I think we're making some, some good progress in that direction. Um, I, I feel good about where things are going. Um, and we, we definitely want to have things as, as sort of cleaned up as possible before, before the elections. Uh, make, if there's any manipulation that we're aware of, make, make that make the public aware of that, um, and just, uh, like I said, try to get uh, th the truth to the people um, as, as best we can. Elon Musk, thank you thank for you. the conversation. Right. Appreciate it. Welcome. That was the entire conversation with Elon Musk. Tucker Carlson today is the name of the show. New episodes three days a week on Fox Nation. Of course, we'll see you every weeknight, 8 p.m. on the Fox News Channel.